Hello, welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. We're talking education today with Neil Wehner. He is on the board of the Redlands Unified School District. Thank you very much for being here. Leslie, it's nice to be back. We know we've talked in the past about No Child Left Behind. What is the current status of No Child Left Behind? Well, it's come a long way. It, it was federal legislation that came about around a decade ago. And the intent was to segregate students based both on race or socioeconomics and make sure that every student improved. And in that regard, it's, it's, done, it's done well. Um, there were different benchmarks that students had to achieve, far below basic to basic and basic above basic, et cetera. And, and throughout the testing and the, and the purposefulness of the program, student improvement has shown. Uh, also for the state of California, we were able to take different standards and incorporate them so that if a student leaves second grade in Southern California and enters in a school in Northern California, they're going to be learning the same thing, hopefully at the same time. Unfortunately, it's an absolute return model, which means that every child is supposed to be proficient in every subgroup by 2014. And that's kind of like asking every child to run a six minute mile on the same day. Mm -hmm. And so because we're not going to achieve that, it's starting to kind of crumble under the weight of its own sanctions. What are you predicting? Where are we heading? Well, fortunately, different states are being offered waivers to opt out of the system, which is nice. Um, but unfortunately, instead of being a very quantifiable model where we can we look at data, we're now, it's more qualitative. We need students that are college ready or career ready or teacher evaluations or principal evaluations that are, are not quantifiable. And so our concern is in our haste to try to form legislation so that we can receive these waivers to opt out of No Child Left Behind. We're not going to do a very thorough job and so therefore we're going to be back in the same situation of struggling with whatever laws that we create for ourselves. So it's been good. Um, it's time for a change, but as I've said many times to you, the, the key is really local control. Mm -hmm. And that's what No Child Left Behind or even state mandates don't give us. And, you know, in Redlands, we, our neighbors are Yucaipa to the east and San Bernardino to the west, school districts that are vastly different than we are. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's um, school, school governance should be handled at the local level, not at the state or federal level. One of your concerns at the local level, um, as demonstrated in the movie Waiting for Superman, uh, they allege uh, dropout factories. Um, how can they be remedied? Are, are there any solutions for schools that are significantly underperforming? Yeah, you know, dropout factories are a black eye on the face of public education. And basically, they're found in areas of poverty. and. Public schools do a pretty good job at controlling the internal influences for a student on the campus. Uh, what they eat, and not what they wear, but within parameters and, and their behavior and w what they're taught. But unfortunately, when a child leaves a public school's campus in these areas of extreme poverty, those external influences are, are very negative. My brother's a school teacher and he talks about trying to break the chain. And it's, it's really hard to break the chain of these negative influences. So are there solutions? Yes. There, there's charter schools and there's other kinds of public schools that manage those external influences, but they do it by increasing instructional minutes, greater, dis be greater controls on, on discipline and behavior, tutoring, all the things that these children would have if they had a constructive and productive family environment around them. There are a lot of social influences that schools almost need to become their family, their second family. Exactly, and so the point is we as a society can do that. However, that extra responsibility comes with a cost. Well, we receive $5,000 per year to educate a child. It costs $40,000 a year to incarcerate someone. Maybe we should spend a little bit more money in these dropout factories. So the investment overall would be worth that? Quite possibly. That's a big job out there. Thank you very much, Neil Wehner, for being here. Thanks for having me. And thank you for tuning in. More HLN coming up right after this.